Hey, how's it going everyone? In last week's video, I shared the 10 steps that I follow every single time I sit down to edit a raw photograph from start to finish. It was in that video during the dodging and burning step, which is a finishing step towards the end of the process where you are selectively applying uh, dark, where you are selectively darkening and brightening different areas of your image. It was in that, dar that dodging and burning step that I brought up the topic of luminosity masks in Photoshop. Now, it is technically possible to do dodging and burning within the raw file. And personally, I like to keep as many edits within a raw file as I possibly can because it's, it's a non-destructive editing environment. However, there is an exactness and, uh, and the, the amount of power and control that you have over the dodging and burning with luminosity masks in Photoshop make it a better solution and make it worth opening that raw file, creating a separate TIFF or PSD or whatever kind of file you want to create. It's worth getting out of the raw environment and editing them in Photoshop. So in this video today, I'm going to share with you and explain what a luminosity mask is, how it works, and I'm going to demonstrate for you how I dodge and burn uh, some of my landscape photos using luminosity masks in Photoshop. My name is Todd Domini. I make videos here on YouTube about photography. I think the easiest way to wrap your head around how a luminosity mask works is to reference the classic Ansel Adams zone system. I'm sure you've probably heard of this, but if you haven't, uh, just real quick, the Ansel Adams zone system was a numerical scale from zero to 10, where he quantified the range of tonal values within an image from pure black to pure white and assigned all of those values a number from zero to 10. So on that scale, pure black is zero, pure white is 10, and then all of the shades of gray in between are assigned a specific numerical value. So if digital photography and Photoshop existed back in the day of Ansel Adams, and if he wanted to dodge or brighten some of the darkest shadows in a photo, then he could have used a luminosity mask to target zone one on the scale, perhaps zone two as well, and to bring more light to raise their value and to make them brighter so that you were bringing more detail and texture out of that uh, area of the image. So that in essence is how a luminosity mask works. For the rest of the video, we're going to jump into Photoshop and I'm going to be using a plugin in order to create my luminosity masks. Now, before you freak out and you think, oh no, I clicked on a YouTube video where someone is uh, explaining how to do something using a, a paid you know, commercial plugin. Well, rest assured that the plugin that I am using, there is a free, 100% free, fully functional version of it that you can download, you can use it today, you can use it forever for that matter. If you wanna check out the TK Actions panel, I will leave a link down below in the uh, video description so you can download a free version of it for yourself. All right, last sip of cold coffee. Um, okay, let's jump into Photoshop and I'm going to demonstrate uh, luminosity masks. Okay, so here we are in Photoshop. Now, just to orient you to what you're looking at, this is an image that I captured in Iceland about uh, a year and a half ago when I was there. It was pretty crazy. The, the wind was so strong that Iceland ended up shutting down a number of roads and actually the main road that runs along the southern coastline because cars were literally being blown off the, off the road. And, um, and you had to hold on to doors uh, with two hands when you were opening and closing them because otherwise they might just get ripped off the hinges. And it was, it was almost like being in a hurricane or a tornado or something. It was really quite, quite an experience. So this is the original straight out of camera raw image here. So what I did after uh, bringing it back and editing and post was to, you know, really dial back the image, you know, uh, you know, pull that exposure back down and enhance the image and treat it in such a way that was more reflective of what the experience was like when I was out there because it was dark, it was moody, it was uh, pretty intense. So I ended up pulling all the color out of it and obviously uh, doing you know, quite a lot of exposure and contrast changes. Now this was the final uh, raw file here. Everything, the image that you're looking at here, even though this is in Photoshop, this is the, the final edits with the raw version of the photo. 
Then I open the image in uh, Photoshop in order to be doing the remaining finishing steps, which was dodging and burning and cleanup. So let me go to the finished version. And this is the one uh, that has the cleanup in it, plus a little bit of dodging and burning in it. And if I just click back and forth between these two images here, you can notice the changes. Now for uh, exposure and, and dodging and burning using luminosity masks, I did some dodging and burning of the grass here in the back just to bring some more attention to those. And I did some dodging and burning of these rocks um, here in the foreground. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to do some dodging and burning with a luminosity mask. And I'm going to demonstrate for you my technique for how I use them. So this is the panel. This is the TK Actions uh, Rapid Mask panel. And um, this is the, the commercial version of it, but the free version of it, which you can download, and the, again, the link is down below if you'd like to get it, uh, is very similar to this. So the meat of this panel, the main thing that you need to uh, know about is this middle section here. This is the mask section. On the right, you have masks, which uh, can be created using the lights, the lighter side, the right side of the histogram. And then on the left is the darker side of the histogram. And this works on a numerical scale. Again, pretty similar to the uh, Adam zone system. So let me just demonstrate what happens. So if I click on the one uh, lights mask, what it does is, is that TK Actions creates a luminosity mask representing uh, that uh, that zone uh, of tonal values, which is kind of like right around the midtones, all the way up to white. And you can tell that's happening because of this rather subtle blue highlight, which you see on the button here, and the fact that it wraps around all of the other buttons to the right. So by clicking on one, you are creating a mask which represents the full tonal range of values in the lighter side of the histogram on the right. If I select two, then it becomes more selective. It's removing some of those uh, slightly uh, darker lights. And now we're getting more specific. So if I go to three and then four, now when we get up, getting up into four, now it's only showing a mask of values that are within four, five, and six. Now, just as a, as a reminder, with a mask, uh, white reveals and black conceals. Okay, so right now you may be thinking, well, what's so cool about that, right? I mean, what can you do with a mask? Well, I'm going to show you. All right, so to do this next step, I'm going to switch back over to the uh, the final raw image so that I am repeating some of the steps I did before. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to dodge the right side of this rock here to match the left side of this rock over here on the right side. So to do that, the first thing I want to do is create a mask, just like I demonstrated before. And there's no real science to this. I mean, you just basically click around in the mask and try to find the one where the area you want to edit is brightest um, comparatively. And that one seems about right. So now that I have a mask uh, chosen, the next step is to output the mask. Now there's options for layer, selection, channel, and apply. Um, apply will apply the mask to a layer in the layers palette. So if you have um, some edits that have already been done and you want to mask those edits, then you can apply the mask to it. Channel adds a new channel to the channels uh, uh, panel. You know, nothing, uh, don't really need to go too deep into that one. Selection will create a selection on screen. As you can see here, you get the marching ants or you can do layer. Now, layer is the one that I use pretty much like, I don't know, 95% of the time and is the most useful because there's a lot in here that you can do. There's everything from curves to levels, brightness, contrast, hue, saturation. If these, uh, if these labels sound similar or familiar to you, that's because these are adjustment layers in Photoshop, which if you are a Photoshop user, you may already be using. What these will do is that these will create an adjustment layer in the layers uh, panel and then apply this mask as a mask to that adjustment layer. So let me demonstrate how that works. So I'm going to select curves right up here at the top. Now you can see over here in the layers panel, a new curves adjustment layer has been created. 
the luminosity mask has been applied to it automatically. And up here in the curves uh, properties view with this, um, with this uh, tone curve here, you can see that the histogram has been clipped to just those values that were exposed by the luminosity mask. They're just right here within the histogram. And there's nothing else here that is being affected by this curves adjustment. So if I were to put a node on this, you know, right where the data is, and then push this line up, then those corresponding pixels within the image are going to get brighter. Now, it may be a little hard to see, but let me just be more dramatic about the change here. Now you can see it in the image, right? So I'm pushing those values up and down within the photo, and they are affecting all of the values within the photo, not just the right side of the rock, because this is a, a global edit. There is a way to fix that, however, and a way to fine tune it, which I will uh, demonstrate for you. I'm going to create a folder in the layers palette or panel, and uh, then I'm going to drag this adjustment layer into that folder, click on the folder, create a quick mask, and the mask that it creates automatically is white, which means that everything within the folder is being revealed. Well, that's not what I want. I want the reverse of that. I want everything to be concealed. So I just click on the mask and then do Command or Control I, and it turns into a black mask. And now the folder itself, there's no effect by, uh, there's no, it's not affecting my image at all anymore because what's inside of this folder is being masked by that black mask. So this is where you do your dodging and burning now. So I can then get a paintbrush and I'm going to set its opacity to 30, flow to 30. Again, no science to this. I mean, those are just the values that seem to work best for me because then your edits are a little bit softer, a little more gradual, and it's not, and it's not happening too fast. It happens at about the speed that I like. So going to set those to 30, white brush, and then I'm going to come in and just paint white on top of that black mask uh, in the areas where I want the uh, curves adjustment layer underneath, or rather inside of that folder to be revealed. Now you may be watching this and you may be thinking, I'm not seeing any change at all, <laughs> right? I mean, it's it. you may be thinking this is, you know, that there's something wrong, that nothing is actually happening. Well, it actually is happening, but the, but the effect is so subtle and gradual over time that, you, um, that you're not noticing the change. So I'm just going in and I'm just finding the areas on the right side of the rock where the highlights are and the ones that I want to accentuate. And you'll notice that as I'm doing this over here in the mask, you'll see this white area showing up in the black mask. And uh, you know, as I've mentioned a few times now, white reveals, black conceals. So this white area is going to be coming through the mask. Okay, so that's probably about enough. Now, if I toggle this uh, folder on and off again, then you can definitely see the change now. Okay, so now let's do the reverse. Now let's uh, inject a little bit of light into some of the areas which are rather dark. You know, like this rock here has a rather, you know, kind of distracting side here, which is pretty black compared to some of the other ones. So again, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna find a dark mask this time that will target just those pixels. And again, white reveals, black conceals, so the fact that this is white and the surrounding area around the rock is black, uh, that's a good sign because then that means that the mask is only going to target this. And so while I'm painting, it's not going to affect these areas around it. So number four looks about right. Um, now I'm going to do again a curves adjustment. Just going to bring those values up a little bit and then let me go a little bit higher. Then I'm going to create a group, add that to the group, click on the group, quick mask, reverse the mask, get my paintbrush, and now I'm going to paint again white into the areas where I want the, uh, the curves adjustment that I just made to be applied. 
So, okay, so I just dialed in those changes. And now if I turn it on and off, then you can see uh, where I painted those in. And this is honestly probably a little too bright because let me go out and show you. And uh, if I turn it on and off, then yeah, see, I mean, like I said, a little goes a long way and it starts to look a little unnatural. Well, because we're in Photoshop, this is actually really easy to remedy. So all you have to do is click on the layer itself and then just drop its opacity. Now, a luminosity mask can do much more than just help you dodge and burn an image. There's all kinds of things that you can do with it. So again, let's just go back to this layers output here. And you know, there's options in here for hue, saturation, there's selective color, there's vibrance, there's color balance. I like using the, the color balance tool um, sometimes with an image. You can do things like you could, you know, let's say you had some color cast in the shadows of your image and you wanted to pull some of that saturation out of the darker regions. Well, with a luminosity mask, it's really simple because you would just target those darkest areas by creating a mask, then adding a hue saturation adjustment layer, pulling that saturation down, and then your edits are targeted to those uh, specific regions within the image where you wanted that saturation adjustment to be applied. So in general, that's how I use luminosity masks. They are such a powerful tool that, I mean, you could do some, you know, some really advanced photo editing with them if you wanted to. You could do, you know, like uh, you know, sky replacements with it. You could do, you know, just broad sweeping changes to a photo if, you know, that's really what you're interested in doing. For me, I typically like to do the vast majority of my work within the raw image, as I talked about last week in my process video and um, to be you know doing most of my edits there and then just do some fine tuning just some little bits of cleanup little bits of of um, dodging and burning and just raising some values and lowering some values in different areas of the image just you know little just you know small movements just little bits of of uh, little tweaks here and there just to give your image just a little bit more just to make it um, just a little more balanced, just to make it look just a little more polished than it was before. Personally, again, it's, it's a subjective thing, but I don't like going overboard with it. You could easily go overboard with uh, a luminosity mask because it is such a powerful thing. But uh, for me personally, you know, this is a phase of editing that I just I just really enjoy because most of the hard work has already been done. I've already figured out the exposure, the color, um, the contrast, you know, most of what I want out of the photo has already been baked in. And by the time I get into Photoshop and I'm going in and making these changes from here, it's like all downhill and I can kind of, you know, relax, kind of get into the zone with it. And it begins to almost have like kind of a painterly kind of quality to it where you're just going in and finessing some of those uh, small details. So next steps for you, what I would recommend doing is opening up the video description below because you will find a link to the free version of the TK Actions Luminosity Mask panel down there. Then you can head over to their website, download it and uh, put it in Photoshop. You can use 100% free for as long as you want. Make some masks with it, make some selections, do some uh, edits and adjustments to your image and maybe uh, repeat some of the steps that I demonstrated here with your own photos and see what kind of effect they have. And just kind of, you know, feel it out, get into a flow with it. And I think you're really going to enjoy using them if you're uh, not doing so already. As always, I appreciate your time and attention. Thanks so much for being here. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. If you enjoyed the video and you got something out of it, please remember to give it a thumbs up and to be notified of future videos when they come out. Also remember to hit subscribe as well. Thanks so much for being here, everyone. I will see you next time.